What's up guys? Today I'm going to be showing you how you can use I2PD, a nice lightweight C++ version of the I2P router to set up your own I2P EAP site. Now I2PD can be perfect if you're running say a single board computer you want to use as a server but you don't have to use I2PD. You can check out my previous video where I talked about how you can set up this exact blog in a railroad package that is brought to us by IDK and it's also a plugin on the Java I2P router. Now today we're just going to be covering I2PD. I figured since I already started covering some I2PD we may as well continue along that vein. So let's go ahead and check out the post I wrote over the last day or two. I wrote this and I actually shared it with members early so people who decide to support this can do that at buymeacoffee.com slash politictech. You can sign up for a membership and I enjoy sharing things that advance and uncut videos and some of the behind the scenes thoughts and planning with people who support this. So if you're interested in that kind of thing you can always support that way or share the video. That's a great way to support this. So this is actually a finished post. I'm going to make it public for everyone uh, but I do share it in advance with members. Now I talk about some of the benefits of why you may want to host a darknet website. Now darknet does not mean some some evil website it does not mean evil content it does not mean that you're going to be you know doing anything wrong in fact it's far from that it's actually providing real security end-to-end -end encryption is what's allowed with an I2P EAP site. Now when you're using HTTPS you actually have third parties you're also relying on things like certificate authorities and ISPs who can do all kinds of different attacks especially if they work in concert with other third parties. Now with an I2P EAP site it's end-to-end -end encrypted. Now what does that mean? That means that only the visitor and the server are handling that encryption. It's not being you know uh, certified by intermediaries at any point. So the server private key stays private with the host and you're able to securely view, log into different pages, and carry out anything you would on a normal website. And I talk about it. You can check out the blog if you want to learn more about the benefits here. Uh, we're going to go ahead and talk about why you want to use this. I chose to use this server here. You can actually go with Apache if you want, but you should be aware that when you're doing that you're going to have to be concerned about certain revelations that happen in the default Apache setup. So there are certain config files and other things that you may need to modify if you use Apache. So we're just going to be focused on this right now and all you got to do is install the web server so do that first. We're going to go into the terminal in a moment but I want to run through the process with you guys. So first what you're going to want to do is install this server and you can follow my my command here if you're on a Debian, a Linux Mint, an Ubuntu, or other similar operating system that has the apt command, go ahead and run this. You'll install the web server. Next, what you're going to want to do if you're on an Arch system, you can run this command to install it. Now once you've done that, what I recommend is setting the web server to only allow direct connections from the local host. And the way you're going to be able to do that is you're simply going to go into your configuration directory which is in we'll simply go into this directory here and this shows where we're at and you can find your server configuration files in this directory and you can also set up what's known as virtual hosts and you can follow any guide if you want to go through various virtual host setups I'm not covering virtual hosts today but you can pretty much cut and paste this into your normal server configuration however you have it set up whether it's a virtual host or if it's just the main configuration you can actually paste this in now the key two lines in this that you're going to want to use if you're hosting an I2P uh, website is allow from local host or 127.0.0.1 and then below that you're going to put deny all. Now what those two lines are going to do it's going to allow connections at all times from your server to your server. Now it's going to deny everyone else. So for example if you're hosting an EAP site on the internet and you don't want people to know where that server is located. For security reasons, it makes sense to host it as a darknet site. It doesn't mean something bad. It just means that the encryption is secure and maybe the people who are doing unethical data collection and snooping may be going 
quote, going dark. Now, that just means it's secure. That's all going dark really means. Now, with these two lines, you're going to protect yourself from local machines on your LAN from being able to correlate the contents of that website. So for example, if you have very specific code or wording on your website, that can be picked up and even something like banner scraping, something like that where they can actually scrape the version and different things of web servers um, and different unique fingerprints of that web server. So you're going to want to deny it on the clear net except to the server itself. So once you do that, once you've added these two lines into your server configuration, and this is just an example of a server configuration, you can simply paste this after your location slash here and then above here which is the location for your website so what you can actually do is set up any website you would just as you would a normal website and so this isn't going to be that much different at all and I'm going to show you how to get it set up on I2P it's going to be a lot easier than you think so stay tuned make sure to like the video comment guys always helps the channel when you like comment share this video sharing the video is probably the biggest way you can help this channel because when other people are reposting these videos it shows the algorithm that they are recommended and reliable sources of information so I greatly appreciate anyone who takes the time to repost these videos so this is actually the location in your server configuration for the HTML, the PHP pages, things like that. So if you want to install Nextcloud, you can absolutely do that. And I actually use this to make my Nextcloud an I2P EAP site. So I already had it as an onion, but now it's also an I2P EAP site. And I'm actually just sharing some of the processes I went through, at least part of it, the main part. So once you have those two lines added, Pay attention to where this is because this is going to be where your files are so you can add an index.html or an index.php and that will show up on your EAP site. Now I mentioned those two lines again because they're very important if you want to make the server location less findable. So why would you want to put something like your GPS coordinates on your server? That just gives people a place to target. So by hosting it as an EAP site you also have that added benefit of the server location not being known and not only that they don't know the ISP hosting the server they don't know your attackers your adversaries also don't know the IP address or the network range so they can't actually target the network because they can't find the network because it, all they know is an I2P address so that's another beauty in doing this so once you've done that you've set those two lines up the next thing you're going to want to do is simply restart the web server so it will actually actually make those configuration changes take effect once you run this command sudo uh, system control restart and then nginx and that will actually implement those blockings so that will help prevent correlation attacks where someone may try to correlate a clear net port scan or banner reveal from and someone may just load part of the content of the page they may be able to correlate that they absolutely will be able to correlate it unless you block everything but localhost so that is what I also break down here so if you want a little more of a breakdown you can always check out the blog as well I give some examples of why you might actually want to host a site like this so if you have an interest in being a citizen journalist open source intelligence investigator and you don't necessarily want to put your face and your name on everything you report on and in a day and age where there is so much centralized power it makes sense to protect yourself and hosting a site like this is another great way to do that so the next thing you're going to want to do is you're going to need to install the I2PD the C++ I2P router now anytime you run I2P if you haven't watched my previous videos the main thing is you just need an I2P router you can choose from multiple different options the original Java which is available at get I2P.net the I2P plus which is at I2P plus github.io or skank.i2p or you can go with this lighter 
I2PD, which is a great option for single board computers and very old computers. So if you want to try it on something lightweight, go ahead and try it out. Here's the command to install it, and here's the command on Arch. Now once you've done that, you've installed both the web server, you've added that blocking configuration to make sure it's only accessible by I2P. The next thing you're going to want to do is add a very simple addition to your configuration. And this is going to finish it off. This is all you have to do to begin editing just as you would any other website. So go into the slash etc slash i2pd directory and inside there you can see I list the files you can see all these different configuration files now this is your main tunnels configuration file now I'll pull it up right now I have it over here as well in the i2pd let's go ahead and check it out so I can go through this file I can pull it up right now we can go through the tunnels and you can see what I've added to it. So I have IRC, uh, we'll cover that another day. Uh, we have the anonymous website right here. Now the key point here is you're gonna wanna sh make sure that the port is the same as your web server. Now the default port for most web servers is port 80. So you don't even really need to change anything. You simply copy and paste from my blog post and put it right into the configuration files I mentioned. Now you wanna set up the port to be the same on the web server as under this anon-website section and it's an HTTP type tunnel so it's going to be able to actually load everything correctly because it is HTTP which is the same as you would on the normal clear net HTTPS just means a secured HTTP with TLS in this case you don't even need to worry about HTTPS you have the added benefit of end-to-end -end encryption overlaid on top of the website so it's going to be end-to-end -end encrypted for any login forms any sensitive data anything you're reading anything you're sharing is not going to be picked up by the invasive corporatized privatized data collection industry which truly is an evil empire in a way uh, I try to hold back from saying that but I just see it not being a good thing for humanity so this is what we have and it really is and just as Jack Dorsey mentioned and it's funny because I've mentioned this many times this is gonna sound a little bit crazy but I think the the free speech debate is a complete distraction right now I think the real debate should be about, about free will. And we, we feel it right now because we are being programmed. We're being programmed based on what we say we're interested in. And we are told uh, through these discovery mechanisms what is interesting. And as we engage and interact with this content, the algorithm continues to build more and more of this bias. What we are seeing is the taking away of people's free will and they don't even realize they are losing their free will and that is because of all the data collection that people allow to happen to them and it's not always their fault they don't have the technical knowledge just to protect themselves they don't know the practices or in many cases just aren't willing to implement that level of discipline that it takes just some discipline it doesn't need to be hardcore but just some basic practices uh, that and some rules to go by can really help you out so once you've added this small section to your tunnels.conf or if you have multiple sites you can actually add them in the tunnels.conf.d you can actually create new tunnels.conf files in there so you could host several i2p eep sites on one machine and that's another benefit here of adding it as eep sites so you don't have to worry about registering with HTTPS you don't have to use the cert bot or anything else you simply add this to your configuration and after you've done that you can then just restart the actual uh, ITPD and once you do that it's automatic you've already got an EAP site and it's already ready to use and to find it all you have to do is go to your main web console as we have right here so when you open it up to 127.0.0.1 then 7070 
is the port. And to do the next thing, you're going to want to click on I2P tunnels. I'm not going to reveal the address, so I will just simply share what you would see, which is this page right here. So you would actually see this right here on it, and I have redacted my own I2P EAP site address. But once you restart it after adding this into your tunnels.conf, you just simply restart it with this command after that and then it'll immediately show up in this I2P tunnel section and when you pull that up you're gonna get this you'll see server tunnels and there will be your new B32 base 32 address right there and that's all you have to do you now have an end-to-end -end encrypted I2P EAP site you can actually modify all of that as you would any other so I can go into my you know slash var slash www I might have you know um, let's say index.php I could start writing some code here and it would show up on the I2P EAP site address and that's really all it is that's all you have to do now if you're going to be making outgoing connections you may want to consider making some firewall rule changes there and maybe we'll cover that in a future video make sure to like the video guys I always appreciate it when people take the time to share this video if you leave a comment you know it's a huge help and to all the members I really appreciate you guys supporting this you know I really couldn't do it without you I wouldn't been able to continue something that is growing at this kind of a niche topic you know it's not something that I normally would have pursued for this many years given that it is a niche topic but you know I think it's important information it's something I believe in so you know I'm going to continue sharing you know tips and tricks that in many cases you know some I share some of my own work and I'm gonna be making some new updates to some of the scripts that I've been sharing so thank you guys for all of your support if you wanna support this in another way I'm also selling core boot laptops I can offer cust I also offer some customization options there uh, in fact you know reach out to me if you're interested in some of those because I haven't posted publicly about some of those customizations but you can reach out to me at right to privacy at tutenota.com or right to privacy at itpmail.org. And I'll be back later with a video soon on how to protect your security and privacy.